lag times. Now, lag times are something that we think about in association with drainage basins. And a drainage basin is just the area of land where water within that area of land flows into the same river. And that river is going to have tributaries coming into it, which are smaller streams flowing into the bigger stream. And the source of the river up here will be high up, maybe in hills, and the mouth of the river down here will be low down, maybe entering into the sea. Uh, we sometimes talk about lag time, especially in relation to flooding. Now, lag time is the time that it takes for the rain, which could fall anywhere within that drainage basin, to get down into the river. Now, if you've got a short lag time, the river's going to fill up really quickly and you're going to have a greater chance of flooding. So what you really want is a long lag time. You want it to take a long time for the water, the rainfall or precipitation that's hitting here, you want a long time for that to actually get down to the end of the river. And then you've got less chance of flooding because it's going to fill up slowly and empty as it's filling. So we want a long lag time really. Now there's a few things that can affect the lag time. The first one is the type of surface. Now, if you think about the types of surfaces that you could have, you could have um, grass or you could have um, cities, or, um, thick trees, forest cover. Now, if we have a think about this, you could have um, three slopes that are pretty much identical except for the land use on them. This slope at the top could be very very thick forests. This slope in the middle could just be grassland and the slope at the bottom could be some sort of city. Now if we imagine the same amount of rainfall falling on each of these images. In the image at the top the rain is going to hit the trees first of all. It's going to be intercepted by the vegetation if it gets through the vegetation, it's going to run very slowly down the trunks of the tree. And if it manages to do that, it might get soaked up by the extensive root system underground. So the amount of water that's actually going to run off that slope is going to be quite small. That's going to mean that the water is going to make its way really slowly down to the river and there's going to be a very long lag time there. If we look at the grassland, well, you haven't got the trees to intercept the rain, but you have got some vegetation and you have got some root system. So... Whilst that's going to soak in some of the rain and stop some of it, a little bit more of it is going to end up getting to the river. That's going to have a slightly faster lag time. The bottom one is the cityscape. Now you've got impermeable surfaces. You've got a lot of concrete. You've got a lot of drains. The amount of rainfall hitting those surfaces is going to be the same as the other two diagrams, but this time it's going to run off a lot faster because there are fewer surfaces to soak it in. There are fewer plants growing. Um, and it's going to run off much more quickly. So this bottom picture is going to have the shortest lag time. The rainwater is going to travel very quickly over the surfaces, very little of it will soak in and more of it will reach the river. The next thing we can look at is relief or gradient. This time let's take a very gentle slope and a very steep slope. And again, the same amount of rain falling in each image. Now in the top image, the rain is going to flow over the surface relatively slowly because it's not too steep. And some of it is going to soak into the ground along the way. In the second picture, the water will flow more quickly because it's a slope. Imagine if you were on a bike going down both of these slopes. You'd go down this one much faster. And because it's travelling much faster, perhaps less of it will soak into the ground on the way. Therefore, this image is going to have a longer lag time because the water will take longer to get to the river. And this image is going to have a, a, a shorter lag time because it is going to mean that the water gets into the river much more quickly. We can also look at the uh, size of a drainage basin as well. So we talked about the fact that drainage basins are the area of land where all that area flows into the one river. 
Now if you've got a relatively small drainage basin and quite a large drainage basin, each with their own river in. Now whilst more rain is going to fall in this area, it's probably going to take longer for it to soak into the river and to make its way down the river. And although you're probably going to get less rain falling because you've got less surface area, it's going to reach the river really quickly. And we can also look at the number of streams as well. So if there are more streams in a drainage basin, um, the, the river is going to fill up much more quickly. And if there are fewer streams, it, the rainfall is going to have to work its way through the ground before it actually um, gets to the drainage basin itself. And the final thing I want to talk about is the actual amount of rain. So if we've got two slopes, both pretty much identical in terms of their um, gradient, both of them uh, woodland. In the top image, it's not rained very much. In the bottom image, it's raining a lot. Now, that rain there is perhaps going to get intercepted by the trees, taken up by the trees. There's not very much of that rain going to enter a river. This one here, because it's raining heavier, more of that rain is going to work its way down to the ground and therefore the runoff is going to be much greater. Now, if this level of rainfall has been happening for a long period of time, the ground is also going to be completely saturated. And if the ground's saturated and there are no pore spaces for that water to soak into, then it's all just going to run over the surface instead. Question one, which type of land use is more likely to produce a short lag time? Urban land uses are more likely to create a short lag time and that's because the surfaces are largely impermeable and therefore water runs off really quickly. Question two, which type of hill is likely to create a shorter lag time, a steep hill or a gentle hill? A steep hill will create a shorter lag time and that's because the water flows down it much more quickly. It's probably less likely to soak into the ground and therefore will enter the river more quickly. Question three. Which size drainage basin will have a longer lag time? A small drainage basin or a large drainage basin? A large drainage basin will have a longer lag time and that's because there's more land area for the water to travel through before it enters the river. Question four. What impact do levels of precipitation, which means rainfall, have on lag times? Well, low levels of rainfall are more likely to be intercepted and absorbed by trees, so they're going to create a really long lag time because it's going to take a long while for that water to get into the river, if it ever does. Heavy rainfall is going to create a much shorter lag time. Not only could the soil already be saturated, but there's more water to run through the trees and therefore more of it's going to hit the surface, more of it's going to flow off. It will flow off faster and therefore it will create a short lag time and it will create a higher level in the river generally.